If you're having issues persuading sales reps to work within your commission-based sales position and you wanna know how to better persuade people into that opportunity, in this video, I'm gonna give you one amazing tip to do that better. Let's go. Hey guys, it's Ryan Holman, founder of Sales Recruiting University, back with another weekly video. Again, my company, SRU, Sales Recruiting University, we're now a 41-person company on track to be at 45 here within the next 30 days. We recruit well over a 1,000 commission-based sales reps per month in all sorts of different sales models and industries, and we come to you every single week with unique things that we're helping our clients with around things like onboarding, training, management, culture, compensation, recruiting leadership, and so much more. And today, we're gonna talk about one amazing tip that you can implement within your recruiting pitch whether that's on the phone, in a group environment, in a one-on-one, -on -one, that you can implement within your recruiting pitch to better persuade people into your opportunity. Now, every position and sales organization is a little bit different, but the reality is, is candidates, from their perspective, they view opportunities differently. Let me give you an example. Let's say that you're like a lot of our clients, where you're in a maybe an outside sales opportunity or an inside sales opportunity, and it's an all commission opportunity, and the lead generation, and everything is dependent on the sales rep, right? There's no salary, there's no training pay, there's no leads, and because of the nature of the opportunity, far few people make it. Well, in a situation like that, when you're explaining your opportunity, hey, it's all commission, it's 1099, it's door to door, you're generating all your own leads, you're not gonna make money for 30, 45 days, whatever it is, from a candidate's perspective, that kind of opportunity can maybe look unsexy compared to other opportunities that exist within the marketplace. And regardless if you're an all commission or low training payer, you do have leads or it's door to door, it's 1099, remote, whatever, regardless of your opportunity, my general point is, is not every opportunity is viewed the same from a candidate's perspective. And you wanna be aware of that. And what you wanna do is you wanna be aware of that, understand it, and then act on it by getting better at the recruiting process, okay? So when we're talking specifically about a commission-based sales opportunity in persuading people into that type of organization, one of the most important aspects of persuading people in the recruiting process is actually the growth opportunity that exists within the business. And that's kind of the point of this video, is I wanna tell you how to objectively explain or portray in the recruiting process the path to sales leadership within your business. If you can lay out this plan, this sales leadership organization chart, like I'm gonna lay out in one example today, and you can implement that, and that's an objectively real thing that you're explaining to candidates, they're gonna go, wow, Every company pitches growth opportunity, but they have it on paper. It's really straightforward. It's an objective, real thing. And therefore, because it's an objective, real thing, I actually believe it. And uh, although there's many facets within the recruiting process that do that and help the candidate move forward and say yes to working with you, this is a really important one. And so the point is, is I want you to make your leadership organization chart. So I'm gonna go through an example to illustrate the point so you can simply do this on your own. It's simply math. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that math and implement it into your recruiting pitch. For us, Sales Recruiting University, our model consists of advertisement, screening and scheduling, pushing all the best candidates into group interviews and funneling the candidates after the group presentation that are highly interested into the opportunity into one-on-ones. And so for us specifically in our eight-step group interview process, this aspect of the career path within the opportunity comes towards the second half, specifically in step seven, where we're explaining the career path and what it can look like for a potential candidate that's seriously wanting to grow within the business, what it looks like to actually get into a sales management or leadership position. So I'm gonna go through an example of a company that's doing a million that wants to get to 10 million. Then we're gonna reverse engineer what the sales team needs to look like, which will help us understand how many leadership opportunities need to be filled. And therefore we can understand exactly what opportunities in the future exist within our business, assuming we are working towards hitting these larger revenue goals. Also as a side note, when you do this for yourself, the goal needs to be fairly big. Okay, so as an example, let's say you're a smaller business and you're doing like 500,000 bucks in revenue. Most likely your big goal right now is to get to a million in revenue. And once you get there, it's gonna be like, I wanna get to two. And once you get to two, it's probably gonna be getting to kind of that five mark. And once you hit to five, it's gonna be 10. And so if you're doing like, you know, six right now, and you know that, hey, if my big next goal is 10 million, but once you get to 10 million, it's probably gonna be 15 to 20 million. What you wanna do in this example, so the leadership path is kind of large, is you wanna think through a big goal, okay? So what I mean by that in the example where, hey, I'm only doing 500K in revenue, well, this example, that I'm gonna go through right now, you probably don't wanna do it for yourself going from 500K to a million. You wanna probably go, okay, if I get to a million, I'm probably gonna to wanna to get to 5 million. And so I'm gonna just do this plan going from 500K to 5 million.
million. And the reason that you want to do that is because if the goal is too small, then this won't be really relevant to your recruiting process. It needs to be large. So when we reverse engineer the team, there's actually leadership opportunities that are required to manage how large the sales team. And so I think this will make sense as I go through the rest of the video. But my point is, is you want to make your goals large. If I'm doing 8 million right now, I don't want to, you know, base this off going to 10 million because right when I get to 10 million, most likely a company like that is going to want to go get to 20 and so on and so forth. Hopefully that makes sense. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give an example of hypothetically a field sales organization. And let's say this field sales organization is in Texas and uh, they have one office and the goal is to scale to multiple offices all across Texas. And they want to go from 1 million to 10 million. That's kind of the big goal over the next, whatever, two, three, four, five years. Well, what we do first is we understand where we're at. We're at a million bucks in revenue. And we also understand where we want to go in that example, this hypothetical hypothetical example, we want to get to 10 million. From there, we understand what the difference is, right? If I want to go to 1 million to 10 million, the difference in revenue that I need to make up is 9 million bucks in revenue, right? So that's the first thing that we do. From there, what we do is we go, okay, based on this 9 million in revenue that I need to create, from there, what I want to understand is, hey, what does the average sales rep bring in monthly from a revenue perspective? Okay, so for the sake of this example, at yours may be 3x this or less than this number, but just for the sake of this example, because I want to lay out a big team structure to really illustrate and drive home the point. For the sake of this example, I'm gonna say the average sales rep, the bare minimum that the average sales rep is gonna bring in annually is 300K in revenue, okay? So 300K in revenue for the average Joe or average Jane sales rep. I'm doing a million, I wanna to get to 10 million, the difference is 9 million. If the average Joe, what I'm basing my math off of, my conservative plan, if the average Joe is doing 300K in revenue plus, how many reps do I actually need to meet the difference of 9 million bucks in revenue? It's gonna be 30 reps, right? 300K times 30 reps, that's 9 million bucks in revenue. So that's the next step. I understand where I'm at, I understand where I wanna go, what the difference is, what the average rep should be producing, right, conservatively, and that's gonna help me understand how many actual sales reps that I need. So in that example, I need 30 additional sales reps doing 300K in revenue to get to the difference of 1 million to 10 million, which is my big long-term goal. And again, this is stuff that we're gonna understand and then objectively implement into the recruiting process so the end result is candidates going, wow, Growth opportunity is actually a real thing in this business. Yes, I'm more excited about moving forward and working with you in your commission-based sales opportunity. So in this hypothetical example, now that we have our 30 reps, we need to understand, okay, what is the sales leadership structure gonna be like? Obviously, you know, one leader is not going to manage over 30 reps. And again, yours may not be near as large of this kind of goal. Maybe you're a solo owner and your goals, as you do the math, result into, you know, needing one leader and four sales reps over the next 12 months or something like that. But again, we're just trying to give you one example. So in this example of needing 30 sales reps and thinking about the field sales organization and most likely what the leadership structure is going to look like, let's just pretend for the sake of this video that for every five reps that we have on the team that we add, we want to advance one sales leader to manage over five people. Okay. And that's our structure. So we have one sales manager per five reps. If I need 30 additional reps to get to my 10 million, how many leadership opportunities is that going to open? Right? Five reps divided by 30 sales reps totaled is six, which means I need six sales leaders. Okay, now all of a sudden I have six really clear leadership opportunities that I need down the line to get to my 10 mil goal. On top of that, in this case, since it's a large example, well, if I have six field sales managers, then again, it doesn't matter the sales model, but if I have six field sales managers, you know, they're probably not gonna be reporting to like the CEO anymore. We're a large business at that time, and there's probably gonna be a sales leadership structure in between the sales leader and kind of the executive team. For the sake of this video, let's pretend that's called a regional field sales manager, okay? And uh, we wanna understand, okay, what's the field sales manager, the regional structure gonna look like? Let's pretend that, hey, for every, you know, two regional managers, they're gonna oversee, you know, three field sales teams and three, you know, sales managers. So what we've done in this structure is we've understand, hey, we're at a million, we wanna get to 10 million, that's a nine million bucks difference, 300K per rep in revenue, that means we need 30 reps. If manager needs to oversee five reps, that means we need six sales managers. And then based on what we said a second ago, we're gonna need two regional managers down the line to oversee three plus sales managers each. Right now we have the structure, two regionals, and under them they have three sales managers, and under those three sales managers they each have five reps each, 15 total between both regions, and now we have our team of 30. And so what we do when we kind of go through this fun process and create and understand the math, whatever it looks like for you, is it just provides clarity on what we need to accomplish. And then we implement that to the recruiting process, makes it more of a real thing for the candidate and in your commission-based sales opportunity, regardless of how sexy it is from the rest of the 
the marketplace, whether they can't make money for 30 to 45, 60 days, or it's door to door, or it's 1099 on the phones and they're generating all their own leads or whatever it may be, this aspect of the recruiting process can help push candidates over the ledge to say, you know what, I'm gonna take a risk in your opportunity because of the growth opportunity and let's move forward, I wanna work for you. So this is one of several things that can help in the recruiting process. Hopefully this was clear. So drop in the comments what stuck out to you. If you have any ideas around future videos, drop a like, share it, subscribe, and we'll look forward to the next video. Thanks.